No. Yes. All right. Hey, hey, assistant coach, how are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports and Biscuit on the edit. Welcome today once again to a new episode of The Road to Glory with the D.O.'s. The D.O.'s? Daddy O's? What? With the O's, that's what I'm saying. What's happening here, guys? I hope you guys had a great day yesterday. Um, we are back again on the road to glory, and I'm excited about today because we do have around 33 million to spend, and we are looking for a backup striker. So today could be interesting. But last episode, we have brought in the talent that we have been waiting for for quite some time, and he's gonna join right onto the bench. Let's do it. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? There he is. Oh, he's on the bench already. Oops. <laughs> Fair Merlin. Five star weak foot, four star skills, five foot 11 tall. A massive, massive talent that we wanted last season, missed out on. And now the only player that we need is a backup striker for the team. And hopefully we can get a really good one in today. And of course, in terms of Premier League football, in the last episode, we have played two games. And we've managed to get a loss against Leicester, which was really tough, and then a draw against Bournemouth. Today, we're going to be playing against Aston Villa. That has to be a game where we prove that we belong to the Premier League. We need to win that game. And there's only a couple of days leading up to it. So I think today what we're going to do, we're going to focus on the game first. The first game against Aston Villa, that's going to be very important. And then after the game, we can go ahead and bring in a striker. Now, here's one thing that I want to point out. In the last episode, we have set up the fan, ob fan objectives till the end. All six fan objectives are set up now. Dynamic duo still on 0 out of 15. Next, Yashin, 1 out of 15 actually because we got a draw against Bournemouth. Um, Master Chef. Cook is on 0 out of 7. El Capitan, obviously, we didn't have any free kicks. In the beginning is uh, the uh, one of the objectives that has been added in in today's episode. Biscuit, my friend, my love, please go ahead and change the, uh, or not change, but download the in the beginning meme and uh, put it in whenever you want to at some point, whenever I talk about that guy, when you feel it's right. I think that's the right thing to do. But the Dark Horse is the next one. It says win three games against the top six clubs in the Premier League. That obviously is going to be a really tough one for us. A couple of people were saying too easy. I don't think it's going to be easy. We got destroyed by Leicester and I think the other teams could be doing a really good job on us as well. And then also with the in the, in the beginning one. In the beginning. With the in the beginning. In the beginning. Um, we have to get 15 scorer points with begin in the Premier League. Not in all competitions, in the Premier League. Also, I just saw a mental transfer. Van Dijk has joined Dortmund. What the hell is going on? What is happening here? Me no likey. Also, in the last episode, PK Epa says, Johnny, train Ed Bennett, because even though he's a beast in game, you might lose more simulation games due to his low rating. I mean... It's not really low, is it? It's 79, but you are right. As the higher your goalkeeper is rated, the better it is for your simulation games. Uh, for simulation games, honestly, guys, I think the most important thing is to have a high rated defense. That really helps with the simulations. So um, as long as we keep on training Bennett and getting him improved, I think we'll be doing better. Um, but yeah, there could be a spot for Bennett in the... Um, in the what's it called the training sessions also of course whenever we showed the fan objectives added in um there are a bunch of people who have left the comments for those objectives so thank you very much to pl quota he has suggested the dark horse and then thank you to gonzalo fonseca who has suggested the in the beginning one so let's get into it today we start off with a game and then we do the transfers robert also joined in this last episode so we could be getting to see Fer Merlin and Robert today. Also, it's a bit too hot, too hot in this room with all the lights. So let's take off the shirt and let's get into this game. Aston Villa is going to be a must win game. If we want to prove that we belong into this league and that we want to stay in this league, guys, this is the most important game so far. Leicester game was a bit, a bit clear. We saw the difference in quality. The Premier League sides are obviously massive. And this Dennis guy, by the way, is insane. Um, from Nigeria, if I'm not mistaken, he played for one of the Belgian clubs. And he now moved into the Premier League, it looks like. And he could be a beast. And it's going to be tough to stop him. That guy has a lot of pace. But we're here with our away kits, ready to jump into this game. And uh, yeah, man, I love those away kits. It's going to be a big, big game right here against a 4-3-3 setup of Aston Villa. I desperately need a victory. So please, let's get it. Also, uh, the top comment of the last episode with nearly 500 likes. Hold on. And goal. Ooh, 
Ooh, great defending. At the top coming to the last episode, coming in from Kyle Gussert. And he says, remember when Dennis was the star player? Ah, those were the days. <sighs> Season one, Dennis, four star skills, four star weak foot. I was like, oh my God, this guy is insane. And then we had to move on. We found Cook. Cook took his position and took definitely is going to play a big part throughout the entirety of this career mode while Dennis sadly had to be put away and once again with the away kits that are dark the game somehow doesn't recognize it and the referee is wearing a black kit as well that's 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 really annoying I don't know how to fix that I might have to think about a solution here but here goes Ferreira and goal with the space and goal with the finish yes Get in! Eighth minute, boys! Lee Angol scores his first goal in Premier League football. 80 rated for a reason. The man has deserved the upgrade after 50 goal contributions in every single season he has played. He has made his way from like a 61 rated player, I believe, up to an 80 rated player. Premier League monster. That is not the best of finishes, I gotta say, but the power was good enough. Goalkeeper couldn't react. 1-0 up against Aston Villa. Let's keep going. Also, guys, as always, I forgot to say this at the start of the video, but hey, if you're new to the channel, we'd much appreciate if you guys could subscribe because we're getting closer and closer to 300,000 subscribers. So uh, that would be much appreciated if you guys could do that for me. Good thing is all of my players have like colored shoes, so I can still somehow differentiate between the referee and my players so that's good Ferreira looking for the opening to pass it into Angol he finds it now Angol ooh tried but they are nervous they're kicking the ball away also guys into the comments down below I want everyone flooding in there giving likes to comments that you think are worth it and also posting your own I need forfeits six of them let me know in the comments down below forfeits just any give me any of them hashtag forfeits as always let's set them up let's get going we need six of them for me to be scared and chase down these objectives they need to be some really good ones so i'm looking forward to it guys go ahead and do it and uh hopefully next episode we'll have all of the forfeits set up oh that's a beautiful ball how did he get that one through dennis trying to finish it it's good defending. It's good defending once again. The boys are defending well to try and keep that clean sheet in the first half. Aston Villa definitely with some huge chances due to Dennis's attacks. He has been the key to their success. Counter attack being started with Ferreira and Angol once again. These two playing together nicely as they always did. Angol sadly not getting the ball across though. Long stuff that should be yours. It is begin now. On his left foot, going to bring it back in into Davis. Davis towards Angol for a second. Lee Angol, he does it again. This man is unstoppable. Hits it onto the goalkeeper, but it's fine. He's unstoppable, right? That's what we're going to say. It's two goals in three Premier League games for Lee Angol. The first two he couldn't score. In this one, he's tearing it up. And I've seen a couple of people comment something like this, by the way, quite often, that I should be switching Begin and Cook's positions in-game because Begin is a left footer. He can cut inside and score. And then we also have Cook who obviously has a five-star weak foot, so he doesn't mind. Um, but that could be an option for the future. I'm going to try it for the rest of this game. If uh, one of them score, that might be a good sign. If they don't, well, we're going to keep it the way it is. All right, 63rd minute. I think it's the perfect time to test our new players. It's going to be Robert coming in for Cook. All right, Robert is a left footer as well, but he has a five-star weak foot, so he can be extremely effective down that left-hand side. Fer Merlin now is going to get his chance to prove himself um, that he is actually that big talent that we have been expecting. And then uh, Miyoshi. Ah, you know what? I'm going to keep Ferreira on the pitch. I'm going to see what he can do. Davis get, is coming off and it's going to be Willock coming in for him. Willock, good ball into Ferreira. Ferreira looking for that run of Angol. Angol back into Ferreira. Ferreira and Angol working together nicely. Angol going for his hat-trick. Can he get it? He can. Of course he can. Of course he can. 
Of course, it's 3-0. Lee Angle announces himself to Premier League football. This guy is unstoppable in League 2, League 1, Championship and Premier League football. We are on fire right here. I did not expect to have such a good game against Aston Villa, to be honest with you. Um, Dennis was causing some problems early on in the game, but man, have we turned up. It's 3-0. There's now Robert on the ball for the first time, and he loses it, but gets it back. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. One thing I can already tell you from Robert is that I love his body type. There's something about that body type. It's different to others. I don't know what it is, but you just know with some players, their movement just feels better, and Robert immediately has that body type on him, which I really enjoy for that type of position where he plays in because he is agile, and uh, we could be conceding here. Oh, Wagner, I love you. Good defending there. Very, very good defending. Fermulin. I like that. I like it a lot, man. Show me what you got. He steps up in that center midfield position and gets the ball in. Uh, back into the team's feet. And once again, he's going to be the one chasing it down. Tavares, though, by the way, I am extremely impressed by. I love Tavares already. He's such a quality defender. That pace that he has is ridiculous. Fermulin and the boys now. Maybe going for a third goal here. Uh, no, for the fourth goal, actually. This is going to be it. It's going to be the end of the game. It's a clean sheet. It's a hat trick. It's beautiful. We got it done against Aston Villa right when we needed to do it. He is the man of the match. Six shots, three goals for Lee Angle. 50% success rate. That's good enough for me. We will take that victory and run with it, boys. Congratulations to the O's for picking up their first victory in Premier League football. Ah, that feels great. 10.0 rating for Angol as well. Totally deserved. I think up next might be the Carabao Cup, guys. Is it the Carabao Cup? Let's check it out. It is, actually. And because of that, guys, I, I want to lose. I want to lose. I don't want to win. I really don't want to win. So please take this away from me. Um, we can put in... Let's see. Can I put Femulen anywhere in there? I can put him at centre-back if I wanted to because he can play centre-back if I'm not mistaken. Um, Ethan Laird is a player that doesn't belong to us anyway, so I'd rather play Femurlin and give him some playtime, so that's where he's going to play for that match. Let's see how he does as centre-back. Could be a good option, who knows? But against Newcastle, I want to lose. I really don't want my team to win, so please uh, lose, lads. Oh, Ferreira is a striker. No, I didn't want him as striker. Ferreira, last few seasons, always was the one that, to ruin this. He's always the one that gets the goals and gets us through into the next round, and I don't want it. Ferreira... I hope you get the message. Ferguson scores. Get in Newcastle. Guys, I'm sorry. I don't care about the Carabao Cup. I never do. Fourth scores an equalizer. What are you doing? Why are you even coming on? Assistant manager, what are you doing? 4-3 on Pence for Leighton Orient. Ah, God. I don't want this. <laughs> I don't want it. It's a win. We're through into the next round. Yay. Guys, I have found a very interesting player. Um, and it's a tough one. It's a really tough one. Can we afford him? That's the question. David Perez, Perez Sayol is loan listed. He looks like a monster. 17 is his value. We're going to approach the club to try and sign him. And he's playing for Athletic Bilbao, a team that we used to play with in the past we had a really interesting career mode with athletic bilbao with all the rules that were in place where you could only buy busk players and stuff like that and that was a quite interesting one where the legend of san jose came up but um i am willing to spend the 17 million on this kid so actually you know what i'm gonna offer 18 let's see what they say 15 percent sell-on clause are they willing to let this guy go they are have accepted let's go i might have offered a little bit too much but honestly I think this guy looks very, very interesting. I'm highly interested. I mean, just look at these stats. His athleticism, 97 to 99 sprint speed, 92 to 99 acceleration. He has 72 to 82 composure. The strength is looking good. The um, reactions are looking good. The stamina isn't looking the best, but it's going to be okay. His dribbling, his finishing, all of that looks interesting to me. So David Perez Sayol could...
could be a massive player to bring in as a backup to um, Angol and uh, potentially a big player for the future as well. Four star week for or four star skills and five star week for if I'm not mistaken. One of those. He has a five star, four star combo and we really want him in the team. Now, we're going to let him know that he's going to be a rotation player. I think he wants to be important. Oh, he's actually happy with that. That's cool. That's perfect for me. Perez Sayol. Let's make that. Let's make this happen, man. Five year contract. He does accept beautiful scenes. Disregarding release cause, he wants 37k, mate, you can have it. Last time I removed the bonus, the player stood up and left. This time, it's gonna be Perez Sayol joining into the team. And lads, it's only a 20-year-old Spanish lad coming in into the team. And I'm extremely excited to see how good he is. Let's see his stats right now. He is gonna be the backup striker that we need. Trust me, I, th I have a really good feeling about this one. Five star weak foot, four star skills, high attacking work rate, low defensive work rate. My God. Okay. Okay. Hold up a sec. This guy has 92 acceleration, 99 sprint speed, 86 agility, 88 balance, 85 reactions, 76 stamina. Not that bad after all. 75 strength. 75 composure as well 86 ball control 85 dribbling 75 finishing 72 sharp power oh boy he's injury prone that's the only thing i don't like about him this is an incredible signing the fact that we signed this guy for 18 million makes no sense at all absolutely no sense he should be worth a lot more i'm gonna check this out right now soyol are you still worth that low wow he's worth 19.5 that's interesting maybe his uh, potential isn't that high that might be one of those players that doesn't have any potential uh, but has reached it already 74 but as a 74 rated player that is insane i mean look at ferreira he has an 87 million value on him and he's only six ratings above him but then again that makes that does make a big difference what am i talking about that card or that player looks incredible i'm excited about that signing and i hope you are as well i genuinely believe we have just made a ridiculously good signing for a very low amount of money that is a big boy player to join into our team should i check his potential let me check it out right now well this guy has potential of 83 it says according to the cheat engine 83 obviously doesn't mean he shows great potential, but depending on how well he plays, of course, he can improve in his potential. So with that being said, I'm excited to bring that guy into the team. It was the one transfer that I wanted. He gets number 18 on the back of his shirt and we are edging closer to the end of the season uh, of the uh, transfer window as we are about to play against Brighton. I want to play against a bigger side. Who's the next team? It's Norwich. Ah, well, I think this episode is going to consist of transfers and the game against Brighton right here will be simmed. So let's see what we can do. Maybe we can look for some cheap players on release clause that um, are probably worth a lot more than their release clause to bring in some more money into the club. But here we go. Leighton Orient. Show me what you got. Perez Sayol on the bench. Robert on the bench. Miyoshi on the bench. Vermeulen. Willock. I could have never imagined to have that many good players on the bench. So hopefully this is going to turn into a good victory for our team right here. We have gotten one win out of three Premier League games. And Brighton, can they please lose against us? Perez Sayol now coming into the game. Four Cook. Tao scores. Tavares gets injured. This is not good. Oh, wow. Okay. We lost against Brighton. That's a bit unfortunate, guys. But that's going to be the way this season goes. The injury will last for two months. Right when I got used to Tavares and started loving him, he got injured immediately. It's two months. Lampru is back into the team, boys. A lot of you guys love Lampru. He is going to be back into the squad right now until... Our main man returns. Um, that's unfortunate. That is really unfortunate. Lampru takes his spot once again. Or I could play Ethan Laird. But then again, 
that guy is only on loan, so don't want to give him too much playtime. To be honest with you guys, I'm now on transfer deadline day and I've been looking at my team back and forth and I've been thinking, what do I need? Now, when we look at the striking position, we now have Perez Sayol. When we look at the wings, we have options in Robert. We have options in Miyoshi, who can clearly play down the wings with his pace. Um, we have Willock for midfield along with Vermeulen, so we don't really necessarily need anyone in there. Miyoshi can be a substitute for the camp position as well. Then for the defense, we have Ethan Laird and Collins, so I don't need any changes right there. So the first team is pretty much set. The reserves team, when I look at it, obviously, Perez Sayol now takes over the position of Ferreira in the starting lineup of this reserves team because we want to give some time off to some of our players, of course. Um, now, with this team, we have the only player that I'm looking at is uh, Lewis right now, where I'm like, hmm, I would like to have someone else in that position. Uh, I would like to get rid of Lewis in that team. Maybe I should be playing Ethan Laird in this defense, so we can, we can put him in, in there. But um, the left wing position is... Uh, not set yet we we might need a backup left wing to take over in our team so what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to go after a left wing for the reserves team because we might need one the player i'm going to go for for the left mid position is a player named emil hansson a swedish lad that i would like to bring in into the team he can play in two positions as well only 23 years old ha seems to have the stats that i'm looking for the speed of course the agility the balance uh, all of that good stuff the ball control the dribbling that is the type of stuff that i need in my team and i think this one might be just perfect now i do know that this contract is running out soon so we might be able to get him for less than his release clause so we're going to try that first i'm going to be making them an offer of 8.5 million plus 10 percent sell-on clause they want 11.4 so that is already below what they originally wanted so that's good 10.5 without the sell-on clause let's see how this goes now they want 11.6 without a sell-on clause. You know what? We're going to accept that. We saved ourselves a couple of millions, and that is totally fine. It is Hanson joining into the team as the reserves team left mid. And of course, this year, we will get to play with the reserves team ourselves as well. So I'm quite excited to get this guy into the squad. We did need a backup left mid. And uh, in that sense, Hanson seems to be the perfect choice right here. So very happy with that one. We do get him into that reserves team and uh, we will have to just sort out the contract in order to do so we're going to tell him that he is going to be a can i tell him sporadic i don't know i'm going to tell him rotation i think he should be happy with that and he is that's great um five-year contract is perfect for me no release clause please oh there is a release clause 17 point no 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 we deny the release clause mate that's not going to happen ask for more wages that's fine with me let's see what he wants Oh, we have to offer ourselves. Well, that's great. Uh, let's offer him 25k. I think that should be okay. I think that should be okay. That's a fair offer. Perfect. Hanson joins us in the team on transfer deadline day. We have made the last signing of the transfer window, guys. And that is a good one, in my opinion. We needed someone for that left mid spot. Lewis wasn't doing it anymore. And uh, we have to bring in an upgrade. And Hanson clearly is an upgrade. A plus five over Lewis. And this guy has... 87 acceleration, 84 agility, 87 balance, even 74 jumping, 81 sprint speed, 67 stamina, um, 78 ball control, 78 dribbling, which is not bad at all. Once he gets to 82, we upgrade his skill moves, of course. Um, short passing is really good. Shot power isn't the best, but the finishing is actually quite decent for left mid. Hanson has joined us to the team, and I'm very happy about that signing. Now the reserves team is properly set up. We get a loan offer for Young, and I am happy with that. We accepted to sell him. No one actually got him in the end, so uh, we have to hope that this loan deal works out. Obviously, we have tried to push out a lot of the talents that are not going to get any playtime this season. 500, 600 million have been spent in this transfer window already. It's going to be boosted up to 693 as we get one last message right at the end. A transfer off of a big in coming in from Aston Villa. You wish blocked by. Let's not forget that we have four good looking talents in the youth academy as well. I mean, at least three of these are going to be very usable 
Cabral, Amaral and McCall, these three look incredible. This guy also looks good, his rating is just not as high. I mean he is actually, sorry what am I saying? All four of these look incredible, Cabral doesn't as much as the others, that's the one. And of course now we get a loan offer for Lewis, I actually am not against it. I think a loan deal to, um, what's it called, is that not Nottingham Forest? I think it is, right? I think I'm okay with this. I think I'm okay with this. Ajax, we accepted an offer. It never really worked out for them to sign him. So hopefully a loan offer will work for Lewis for him to join Nottingham Forest in January. Interest shown in Umur. A loan deal for Abdul Qadir Umur. He has 45 million in his release clause. That's interesting. If you guys want to make sure that you are able to buy some good players... Just keep putting players into your transfer hub and then you get this message which tells you that... Why is De Gea looking so weird? His face his face looks a bit distorted. It, it's actually scaring me. Um, but yeah, um, if you go ahead and put players onto your transfer hub, you will get messages like that. So that's very important for you to know. I think um, now we have let go of Jordan Lewis. He will be leaving in January for a one-year loan deal. I think that's going to be the best thing for him. He could come back as a strengthened player. But Norwich City is going to be the next match that we have lined up. Transfer window business has been done. We have brought in Perez Sayol. We have won a game 3-0. We have brought in Hanson. The team is set up. We have spent all of our budget, basically. And we do have a bunch of the wage budget left in the club. So we can use that in order to go ahead and improve contracts whenever needed. But guys, I'm excited about Perez Sayol. I'm excited about this Premier League season. Right now, we are in 14th place. Four games played four points that's not good enough we need to climb back up the league table Chelsea is actually below us which is quite interesting to see but United currently with five games five wins that's interesting I expected a different team at the top but it seems like United is the one dominating so far thank you guys so much for watching looking forward to seeing you in the next episode have a great day take care peace